Okay, back at it again. Um, <clears throat> got everything torn down. We've inspected our block. Uh, we know that, uh, as I said before, we got a little spot here. I'm going to have tested to make sure it's not, uh, make sure there's no permeations in it. Make sure that it's all uh, intact and it's not going to transfer uh, vapors from one cylinder to the next. So uh, we're going to have uh, our machinist test that. Got our motor mounts out, ready to go. <clears throat> ready to go off to the machine shop. Now what we're going to do now is start disassembling each one of these pistons and, uh, and, and checking our, our rods out. Um, I explained before that each one of these rods is a one piece, one cap, one rod, and it was made that way and you cannot substitute. There, one side of it's gone, the whole thing is bad. So, what I'm going to do here is there's a retaining clip in here. Pull this retaining clip out. Pull the retaining clip out of the other side. Depending on uh, how violently the uh, motor went, <coughs> when it blew, it will depend on how hard these uh, wrist pins are to get out. These don't appear to be too bad. They make a special tool for this that's about $500. But uh, I take a socket that fits down in there and push them out with a socket. So I got the wrist pin out like that. My socket should fall back out of there. There we go. There. Then you take and uh, all your needle bearings, wrist pin needle bearings, will drop out. Make sure you get every one of them, because some of them probably fall down into the piston. Okay, it looks like all of them. Now what I'm going to do, get a nice clean spot, use a towel here. We're going to lay them all out and we're going to count them. This is one of the most important parts. Different size motors have different uh, numbers of bearings in them. I line them up in stacks of four because it's easier for me to count them that way. Four, 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 four. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times four is 28. We have 28 needles in here. Our little, <clears throat> our washers, there's a spacer too and our clips there. I'm going to get a new bag out. I'm going to write on the bag that it takes 28 needles per wrist pin. So 28 needles. way I know, taking the guesswork out of it, right? That way I know when I go to reassemble this that I've got to have 28 needles for each wrist pin. And it's uh, pretty easy to put, uh, you know, put the wrong amount in there. You can't put too many because there's not enough room, but you can put one, one less and not know it. And you're going to have a bad time. So double checking this, triple checking it, quadruple checking it is very important. Very, 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 very important. <clears throat> okay. One piston done like that. Now, clean all the grease and oil off of our connecting rod. And we will inspect this connecting rod. show you how I do one rod and then I'm gonna I'm gonna do the rest of these at a later date other than bore you with the uh, details
see my sanding block around here anymore. Had a little round sanding block to clean the insides of these, and uh, I guess someone thought that they needed it more than me. So, what we'll do, some 80 grit sandpaper. We'll go with the flow. With, you know, the, the bearings are going to ride around in there like that. We're going to go with the flow of it. We don't want to go across that way because I, you know, put little potholes in it. Clean up the inner portion of this rod. That's a good looking rod. I don't see any scuff marks, any holes. I don't see any water marks in it. it. Looks like a really good rod. Same thing with our wrist pin side. I'm getting old, so I need a flashlight. <clears throat> My eyes are getting bad. So I'm going to take a look in there, and that looks good nice and shiny and nice and clean. These holes in here are oil ports. When you reassemble this motor you'll notice there's an oil port right here and an oil port right here. The oil port right here is always going to face up. That way when the oil comes dripping down from upwards in the motor as it works its way through it's going to land in this portion of the rod and it's going to work its way out through that hole lubricate the needles and the wrist pin bearing and then work its way out that way. This hole is also on the same side as your index point when I was showing the index point on the rod earlier. This index point will always face upward. That's where your hole is. So there's two different, two different uh, points right there to show you which way the rod faces. Extremely important. Um, having your rod upside down like this, no oil goes through the wrist pin bearing, and it didn't uh, have, gonna have a bad day. So very important, oil hole up along with the index point up. It's the way they make them. Okay. I'll clean this guy off. Sandpaper wore out pretty quick because these are uh, these rods are impregnated with oil. There's oil all through them. <clears throat> and uh, so the oil picks up in your sandpaper and you run it. Wear sandpaper out pretty quick. I always just grab new pieces of sandpaper because Sandpaper is a lot cheaper than elbow grease to me. Okay, our rod cap looks great. No marks, no distortion, no burn marks, no water marks. I think we got a winner here. And when we put this back together, I'm going to line up the index points on it. Screw back in there. Okay, it usually takes a couple weeks to get your engine block back. It depends on how busy the shop is. Sometimes it can take up to a month. It depends on how busy the guy is. So um, what I always do is I will take a uh, I had two open things with grease, but that's okay. I don't know one. I always take grease with a little bit of oil, a little container. Put grease. This is triple guard grease. This is a thickest stuff Evan Rude makes. Some grease down in there. Then I'll take some. This is XD50 in this can. I'll put some XD50 in there with it. Make a nice paste. It makes it so the um, thins this grease up a little bit to where it'll get in all your um, it'll get in all your, the little marks you made with the sandpaper. They'll all get filled up with it without having to work too hard to do it. So once I've got my nice little paste made there, I paint the inside of this. That way it is. Uh, protected from the elements and will not rust on me while I'm waiting to get my block back.
when you get new pistons, you will have a new wrist pin come with the piston. This piston, with these score marks in it, will not be used again. A lot of people will reuse these and just put new rings on them. Not, not us. If it's got a little score mark in it like that, that's a bad product. And uh, this one will go in the scrap pile. So, I'll just uh, set this out of the way for a moment. So, now you see what we do with the rod. Now your rod's preserved for six months, eight months, a year, two years, three years. It doesn't matter. That rod's not going to rust on you. guy in there. Now back to the crankshaft. I showed you guys yesterday uh, that on our top cylinder we had an aftermarket bearing because uh, it was pretty obvious to me that the top cylinder was the cylinder that failed before this was this motor was rebuilt the last time. Well when the motor failed the last time it, it, it apparent that it was due to a lean out and a lean out can cause, be caused by several different uh, things a vacuum in your fuel tank, um, a carburetor float getting stuck can lean one out. There's a, there's a few different things that can cause that, but um, I, I'm, I'm under the assumption, and I'm probably right, that this is a lean out. Now, if you can see this spot right here in the crankshaft, that's the bad portion. If there was one little hole in the middle, it may be reusable, because if you look at the rods, where they've got those oil holes in them, it'll skip over that one hole as long as there's nothing protruding or jutting out from it. This however is directly across the crankshaft. It's covering the whole portion. So every time that um, rod and bearing make a revolution on there, it's hitting this pothole and it's going to destroy it. So that's why this guy is going to go in the trash. Or scrap out. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, disassemble the rest of these rods. I'm going to check them all out. If I do come across one that I see a bad spot in that I'm going to be uh, putting in a can and reordering, I'm going to uh, I'm going to let you guys know what, what a spot looks like like that. These all do look pretty good, which is good because rods are very expensive. Those rods are over $100 each. and. Um, you know, you get into buying six rods and six pistons, well there's $1,200 in, um, in materials that go into your motor without even boring or sleeving. Crankshaft like this, the list price on that crankshaft is probably around $900. So if you got a crankshaft gone and you got six rods and six need six pistons, you probably, um, you're probably not going to want to rebuild that because it's going to cost Gonna, the, the cost of rebuilding is going to exceed the value of the motor. And that's what you want to avoid. So um, I'm going to get off camera here, take care of this stuff, and uh, I'll talk to you guys in a minute.